Hi everyone, this is Stan, your favorite Polish Taiwan YouTuber. Hope you're all having a great day. Welcome to today's show. The Straits Forum, or in Mandarin Haixia Luntan, is about to begin in mid-June. The Taiwan Affairs Office, it's a government organization in China, stated that they would provide over 1,200 job opportunities for young people in Taiwan. However, today the Mainland Affairs Council, that's the similar organization but in Taiwan, stated that the youth unemployment rate in China has exceeded 20%, and finding a job is not easy. Isn't that strange? If it is not the United Front Fork, then what else could it be? When the Chinese Communist Party is calling out to Taiwan, saying they want to provide employment opportunities for young people, while their own young people can find a job. Do you guys remember another case? In March of this year, I made a video on the possible economic collapse of China. Apart from the reduction of medical insurance money leading to elderly people protesting on the streets, there was also a wave of early loan repayment hitting the banks. Nobody wanted to pay loans anymore due to the instability. As a result, banks started setting monthly loan repayment quotas. And once the quota is reached, people have to queue up. Some even claimed on the internet that they had to wait until October to repay their loans earlier. At that time, I also mentioned the dire situation of Chinese graduates in the video. Many of them end up unemployed after graduating. And this problem has become increasingly severe. Moreover, the situation has not improved over time. By April of this year, the the national unemployment rate amongst the 16 to 24 year age group in China was 20.4%, surpassing 20% for the first time in history. It means that one out of five young Chinese people is unemployed. Last time I also mentioned that it is not just young people. Even experienced professionals and people in their 40s who should have been in a stable phase of their careers have shown a noticeable increase in employment and economic anxiety. Recently, in China Starbucks, batches of middle-aged people who are already unemployed or about to become unemployed have started occupying the cafes. Many of the people used to be white-collar workers. They hide in Starbucks, either waiting for job interview opportunities or hoping to avoid the pressure coming from their families. They used to have office jobs, and now they have to spend their days in Starbucks. These people who spend their times in Starbucks around China are different from the blue-collar workers I've talked about last time. And by the way, now factories in China only hire people who were born after 1990. And now the white-collar workers are facing the risks of being laid off. This also leads to growth in mid-aged unemployment anxiety in China. According to the Radio Free Asia's report, China had anticipated an economic rebound with the reopening of factories after they lifted the lockdowns. However, they overlooked one crucial factor, which is the highly tense US-China relations due to Xi Jinping's aggressive wolf warrior diplomacy. Additionally, over three years of the pandemic prevention policies frightened foreign investments away. As a result, a significant amount of capital has been withdrawn from China, and orders to the Chinese factories have been redirected to other countries for production. Xi Jinping's rule only caused multiple sectors of economy to be on the verge of collapse, starting with the real estate sector and the banking system. Naturally, these factories do not have the funds to pay their workers, leading to various forms of mistreatment. For example, relocating work to inaccessible areas or outright wage deductions. According to the statistics from the Hong Kong non-governmental organization China Labor Bulletin CLB, there have been at least 130 factory strikes in China in the first half of this year. Don't you find the CCP government ridiculous? Foreign investments were initially coming in, nobody talked about the decoupling from China. But what did the CCP do? They pursued aggressive wolf warrior diplomacy, implemented zero COVID policies, followed by the retaliatory lifting of lockdown measures. Constant provocations in the South China Sea and in the Taiwan Strait, providing assistance to Russia in its war against Ukraine. And now, after everyone started running away from China, they suddenly realized, oh, we really need foreign investments. But Xi Jinping refuses to apologize or step down. They expect all of you to come back and invest in China. How stupid do they think the other countries are? If you have been following my YouTube channel, you probably remember that in early May we talked about CCP bagging Australia to sell them coal. The CCP's wolf warrior diplomacy has started showing the consequences in economy, energy military development and food security. Under economic pressure caused by blackouts, they have started to bow down to Australia. Don't forget that even though they had long-standing conflicts with Australia, now they resumed purchasing Australian coal, minerals and agricultural products. Right now China hopes to restore the era of peaceful development when everyone used to appease China. 
Recently, they also invited officials from Germany and France to visit Beijing, as well as a delegation of Australian corporate executives and local government officials. And now, the CCP has sent their special envoy, Li Hui, to Europe to negotiate on behalf of Russia and pursue the European countries to accept part of the territories that Russia unlawfully invaded as a part of Russia. This kind of bizarre diplomatic approach is truly unprecedented. So are the Chinese diplomats now representing Russia? And there are also strange domestic policies under the leadership of Xi Jinping, like the policy of turning forests into farmland, which has a goal of turning forests, windbreaks, mountainsides, and even asphalt roads into agricultural land. And then they impose the new tariffs on farmers, causing vehicles to be stuck on highways for several days, leading to farmers missing the harvesting season. Furthermore, they spend billions of dollars to purchase wet drying machines to dry wet that has already sprouted and lost its value. I just want to ask my Taiwanese viewers, after hearing about the Chinese Communist Party's ever-changing domestic and foreign policies that leave them helpless, would you still believe the lies of the Taiwan Affairs Office? They promised to provide over 1,200 job opportunities for the Taiwanese, but why don't they first solve their unemployment problem among their young people? Recently, the Chinese Communist Party has even started encouraging young people to set up roadside stalls or urging college graduates to find jobs in rural areas. When you compare both sides, don't you realize that the statements from the Taiwan Affairs Office of the CCP are nothing more than a scam? Therefore, I suggest that you guys think twice before acting. And I hope that you won't become someone who betrays their own country for short-term benefits. Whatever the CCP is offering you now, they will ultimately steal it from you in the long run. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please press like, subscribe and share. This is Tian. I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.